Okay, I've had my Xbox Series S for about one and a half years now. I've had this thing as soon as it came out, and within the last one and a half years, there's a lot of things that I love about it, but a few things as to where it fell short. Stay tuned, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the pros and cons when it comes to the Xbox Series S, super long-term review, and if this console is something for you. Anyways, let's get right into it. Now, when it comes to the Series S, a lot of people think, oh, this isn't even a next-gen console. To be honest, within the last year and a half, all the graphics, the picture, everything on this console right here is beautiful, especially the speed. However, I'm gonna start off where it fell short first, because usually when I weigh out pro and cons, it always talks about the pros first. So with that being said, here are the cons of the Xbox Series S over the long run, and my personal thing that I don't like about this console has to be the amount of storage that is on it. When it comes to this console right here, it only comes with 512 gigs, but after everything, you only have about like 364 of actual storage. So with that being said, that is not too many games. Me personally, on the actual console itself, I could fit around 10 games and still have a little bit of room left over, but that's with my highest game being at like 50 no 65 gigs of storage so if you do want to use this as your primary console and you have something like call of duty on here which is going to be like 90 gigs on top of like warzone like it's going to take up over half of the space on this console and you're going to have to go and get some sort of expandable storage now when it comes to expandable storage like this i do recommend it but the one thing the one problem i have about this right here is the fact that if you do have games that are optimized for the xbox series s you can't play them directly off of the storage unless it is that new expandable storage memory card that xbox had released which is pretty much the same price as the xbox itself which to me doesn't really make sense because why pay the same amount for storage that you're paying for an actual console? So within the first year and a half, I, there have been times where I've gotten frustrated and had to install games I really, really like just to move them back in and install them again later, which may be a hassle because depending on how big the game is and the file size of the game, it's gonna take a really long time. Well, I'm being kind of dramatic. It'll take like 10 or 15 minutes, but still, it's a long time in my eyes because in 10 or 15 minutes, I could be playing that game, not just waiting for it to download. So when it comes to the cons with this Series S right here, the storage is definitely gonna be the main one. Honestly, besides the storage with this console, I can't think of anything wrong that I don't like. Um, like I said, it is super fast. It does get really hot, which I guess could be another con, but it's a small console. It's not really, you know, expected to be cool all the time, but even though it's hot, let me tell you something, it is really quiet. I remember having that old PS4, and whenever I would turn that thing on, it just sounded like an airplane, like some sort of rocket launching out from SpaceX. So this thing right here, even though it does get hot, is it is really quiet. But overall, besides the actual storage on the device, and besides how hot it gets, I think it's a really, really good console. A year and a half in, I still use this as my main source of gaming. Tried to get a PS5, for some reason, I'm just getting a little lazy and not wanting to do it because this is keeping me good. One of the main things I love about this device, besides the size, you can take it anywhere you go, is Game Pass. Now, I know some people hate Game Pass, some people love it, but the amount of games that Game Pass actually offers with the Xbox Series S is phenomenal. Let me tell you something, I have been playing literally just games off of Game Pass, and in the last year and a half, I've bought one game, and that's Cyberpunk. And when it comes to Game Pass, there are literally hundreds of games, ranging anywhere between like first-person shooters, split-screen games, farm simulator, flight simulator, a whole bunch of really amazing games, not just for you, but for your friends, for your girl, for your whole family, and it's a really a great price and it's a great deal. You can also use Game Pass not only on your Xbox, you can use it on your phone, you could play it on your iOS, your Android, you could play it on whatever and Game Pass personally is what sold me on this console and which is why I haven't even upgraded to like a Series X or a PS5 because honestly, the Xbox Series S is all I need. 
Now, I have brought my Xbox Series S to my friend's house, and he has a PS5, and we did put play the PS5 and then play the Xbox Series S. And when it comes to the graphics, there are minor, and I mean minor differences when it comes to the graphics on these two devices, which I personally don't think is too, too big. Now, if you want the best graphics, go ahead, get the Xbox Series X or get the PS5. But when it comes to the Xbox Series S, it will not disappoint you, especially if you want it as a side console for your PS5. I highly recommend it because you get introduced to Game Pass. You don't have to pay monthly for it. I've had a lot of questions in my last comment saying, hey, if I get Game Pass and then I just want to opt out because I'm playing a game I bought, you can definitely do it. Just know that within like a week, the game that you had on Game Pass downloaded, you will no longer be able to play. But you could also opt back in whenever you want. So it's really cool that Game Pass really gives you that option, especially when you want to download like Cyberpunk and you just play that or like Lego Star Wars that just came out and just play that and not even use any of the games. You do have that option. Now, I know I briefly went over about the size of this console, but it is really small and you could take it anywhere you go. It literally fits in your backpack super easy, doesn't have too many cords, literally just put it in your bag, go. They also sell one of these things that you could actually put on the top, where if you wanna just like take it on the go, flip the little screen open and play like that, you definitely could too. It's about the same price as the Xbox, which is why I don't have it yet, but hey, if that's something you wanna do with this, you definitely can. Now, something else I love when it comes to Xbox, and this is with the Series S or the X, is just the fact that Xbox does give you an option to create your own controller in the Xbox Design Lab. This is something that I absolutely love because I love making things my own. So this is the controller I customized. I personally love it. I think it's super, super sick. You can see the red triggers. There is so many different colors and so many different options. And if you are coming from PlayStation, it's really, really cool to design your own controller because yeah, PlayStation just doesn't offer that, at least not yet. But if they do, I don't know, that would be sick. Now with the Series S, you also have a emulator. So if you wanna play old school Nintendo games or anything like that, you can install Xbox dev mode, go ahead, go in your Xbox and then play those games too. Now, something that I forgot to mention when it comes to the Xbox Series S and Game Pass is yes, you do have cloud play. Like I said, you can play on your phone. You also have the ability to play video games on your actual console with remote play. Like I said, both works for Android and Apple, but something else is you get day one Xbox exclusives on Game Pass right then and there. I'm talking about Halo Infinite. I got the very first day, that game's amazing. You know, also Forza Horizon 5s and then Bethesda games too. And I feel like Game Pass is going to keep on growing. Now, if you don't mind having graphics that are just a little less sharp, I'm talking about a little less sharp compared to the Xbox Series S and the P Xbox Series X and the PS5, then get the Series S. If you don't mind having to move your games around or don't really want too many games on your console to start off with, go ahead, get the Series S. To be honest, for the price, for the things that it does, it is really a no-brainer. The pros definitely outweigh the cons. But if you have any questions about this console or anything that I didn't go over in the actual video, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and everybody, thank you so much for everyone who supported my channel. We just hit 5,000 subscribers, so congratulations. I may be doing a contest soon and stick around because I'll also be going around my top five favorite games for the Xbox Series S in 2022. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Y'all have a wonderful day and I'll catch you next time. Peace.